Hello, and thanks for clicking on this next Nordgebra One production. Today, we're going to talk about an introduction to inequalities. So we're going to talk about inequality notation, is greater than, is less than, is greater than or equal to, is less than or equal to, and how to use that notation to uh, translate expressions, as well as interval notation, which some of you will probably be learning for the first time. All right, so let's get started on some of this review. Oops, let's go back here real quick. There we go. Okay, so let's talk about each symbol. So you've learned these before many times. Uh, this symbol here, the first symbol is is less than. Okay, the second symbol is is greater than. All right. Now, if you're wondering, hey, I always forget the difference between the two. I know there are some teachers who teach that alligator method. I like to do it. I think there's an even easier way to do it than that. The less than symbol, you can write the word less in it. There it is. Okay. There's the word less in the less than symbol. Okay. You can't do that with the greater than symbol. All right. So that's how I tell the difference between the two. Uh, this third one with the line underneath is, is less than or equal to. It's allowed to be equal to that boundary number. And then the last one is greater than or equal to. And then here at the bottom, so those are our four main symbols that we use in uh, equality notation. Uh, but two words at the bottom here, which give students trouble all the time, are at most and at least. Which symbol do you use for at most and at least? So <clears throat> what I would ask is uh, think about what kind of answer you would give to me if I were to say to you, go to the store and bring me home at most seven apples. So think about how many apples you would bring home if I said at most seven. Uh, hopefully, in your head, you're saying to yourself, well, if it's at most, then I can't bring home more than seven. I got to bring home seven or less. So the symbol or the word at most leads us to the symbol less than or equal is less than or equal to, right? Okay, I'm, I want you to take the number of apples and make them at most seven. Bring me less than or equal to seven apples. All right. If I say at least, if I say bring me home at least three oranges, well, at least means it's going to be three or more than that, right? You could bring me home more than three oranges because I said at least. So that would be the greater than or equal to symbol. So the idea would be the number of oranges would be greater than or equal to three. Okay, so that's the difference between at most and at least. Those are two of the most uh, confused inequality symbols when they're used in words. All right, let's try to translate some into words real quick. Again, a lot of this is review, uh, and then we're going to talk a little bit later about something that's new that you've probably never seen before. So... Let's write an inequality for the verbal expression below. The first one says all real numbers x less than or equal to negative 7. So we want x to be less than or equal to negative 7. There's my, there's my statement. There's my inequality statement right there. Okay. The sum of t and 7, sum, remember sum means to add. So we're going to take t and add 7 is less than three, is less than, it doesn't say equal to, three. Okay, so here's a good example here. There are at most 31 students in the class at Jacobs High School or Jacobs School, whatever it may be, okay, at most. So if I say there's at most 31 uh, students in this class, that means the number of students has to be less than or equal to 31 at most. There's no more than 31 people. All right. My parents require me to do a minimum of two hours of chores per week. So the number of chores I have to do, 
a minimum. That means the lowest that I could do is two. I have to do greater than or equal to two. Two or more. C has to be greater than or equal to two. And then I want to get at least a 90 on my next math test. Then on the math test, at least a 90. That means greater than or equal to 90. At least 90 or more. <clears throat> okay? That's how you translate from words to the inequality statement. All right? Something I'm sure that you've done before. Okay. A solution of an inequality is any number that makes the inequality true, just like it is for equations, right? If I solve for x and I get x equals 5, then I know if I take 5 and put it into my equation, so if I had x plus 2 equals 7, and I subtract 2 on both sides, I get x equals 5, okay? Now, what do I know about 5? If I plug it in or substitute it in up for x, 5 plus 2 equals 7 it makes this equation true. Well, a solution of an inequality is any number that makes the inequality true. Now, there can be more than one solution to that. So, I want to know, is the number negative 3 a solution to this inequality? Whenever I ask you if something, a number or a point or an ordered pair, is a solution to an equation, to decide if it's a solution, all you need to do is take this value that I want to know and substitute it in for the variable. It either makes it true or it doesn't. So 2 times negative 3, that's a negative 6. Plus 1, negative 5. We're comparing. This says negative 5 is greater than negative 3. No, it's not, right? Negative 5 is less than negative 3. It's smaller than negative 3. So this is not true. So is negative 3 a solution? No. Okay. It does not satisfy. Satisfy the inequality. It doesn't make this inequality true. <clears throat> okay, five is not less not five is not greater than negative three. All right. All right, how about over here? If we tried negative one, hopefully you try it. We're gonna have two times negative one plus one is greater than negative three. That's negative two plus one greater than negative three. Negative one greater than negative three. Is negative one greater than negative three? Yes, it's closer to zero on the number line. This is true. So, negative 1, yes, it is a solution. Okay, it satisfies the inequality. Or it makes the inequality true. You could say that. There's a couple of things that you can say. Those are two of them. It satisfies the inequality. You could say it makes it true. Right? It makes a true statement. Negative 1 is, in fact, greater than negative 3. Okay, you're closer to zero on the number line, on the negative side. All right? All right, so that's how we figure out if something is a solution to an inequality. We just take the value, we substitute it in, it either makes it true or it doesn't. Okay, next thing that we're reviewing is you can use graphs to indicate all the solutions of an inequality. Now remember, if I want you to graph n is less than negative 1, or I'm sorry, n is less than 1. We'll put a 0 there. We'll put a 1 there. n is less than 1. That means all the numbers to the left of 1 are solutions. But 1 is not a solution. It's not allowed to be equal to. So we use an open circle on the boundary number, on 1. It's an open circle. One is not included, okay? So if we have an open circle, the boundary number is not included in the solution. If we use a closed circle, 
the boundary number is included in the solution. Like in our second example there, uh, if we have negative 2 is greater than or equal to x. All right, now, this is what it looks like on my number line. Negative 2 greater than or equal to x. I have 0, I have negative 2. It's allowed to be equal to, so it gets a closed circle. It says negative 2 is greater than or equal to x. If I read this from, left, from right to left, though, it says x is less than or equal to negative 2. x is less than or equal to negative 2. How do I graph x is less than or equal to negative 2? We go up and to the left. Okay. Just be careful. Um, some of you may have learned that the arrow tells you which way to draw your arrow on the graph. That's not necessarily true. If the variable's on the left, then it is true. If the variable's on the right, you'd have to rewrite the inequality by reading it from right to left. X is less than or equal to negative 2. And then you could do that. You cannot use that hint if the X or the variable is on the right-hand side. Okay. All right. Let's practice that uh, a little bit here. Let's graph the solution to the inequality shown below on the number line. Here we go. So on my number lines uh, that you're going to make for me, you're going to put 0 on there. And then you're going to put whatever the boundary number is, which in this case is 3. This says x is greater than 3, so not equal to, so it gets an open circle. The boundary number is not included, and x is greater than 3. Where are my numbers that are bigger than 3? Over this way, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. There's my solution. x is less than or equal to 5. Put a 0, put your boundary 5. x is less than or equal to, so it gets a closed circle. Because the boundary number is included, it's allowed to be equal to it. X is less than that, less than 5. So those are numbers like 4, 3, 2, 1. We go up and to the left. And then finally, we have negative 7 is less than X, which if you'd like, you could rewrite, read from right to left. This would say X is greater than negative 7. So x is greater than negative 7, put a 0. A negative 7 goes to the left of 0. x is greater than negative 7, so not equal to. So open circle, and then greater than. So we're going to go up and to the right. Okay, All the numbers bigger than negative 7 are to the right-hand side. So there's a couple of examples, how to graph the solutions, the inequalities that have been shown. All right. Now, let's talk about interval notation, okay? Our solutions can also be written in interval notation using brackets and parentheses. So the idea is we can take a graph, and instead of making it or writing it as a graph, we can put it in this interval notation. This is new for most of you, all right? A bracket is used to indicate that a value is included Oh, that's not spelled right. L-U-D-E-D. -E included in the solutions. Okay. A bracket. This is a bracket. Or this one, depending on which side the number's on. Okay. The bracket would be like your closed circle if you were graphing it. A bracket is like a closed circle. Same thing. Okay, <clears throat> parentheses, parentheses, this or that, are used to indicate that a value is not included in the solution. So your parentheses would be used if you were using an open circle on that number. Okay, if you were graphing it, you're going to use an open circle. All right. Infinite values, we will also in interval notation use negative infinity and positive infinity in our solution. Okay, in some case or another, we'll explain to you when. Always use parentheses. They always get parentheses. They can never get a bracket next to them. All right, never a bracket, always parentheses. Okay, so 
let's show you how to write things in interval notation. Okay, let's try some. So we're going to graph them first, and then I'm going to show you how to translate from graphing it to interval notation. So try to graph all three, see if you can graph them. And then now let's take a look. We have x is greater than or equal to negative 1. So we're going to have 0. We're going to put negative 1 to the left of 0. Uh, it's allowed to be equal to. So the boundary number is included. I put a closed circle on there. And then I go up and to the right. Okay. That's the graph of this inequality. Now I want to write this inequality in interval notation. So here's what I suggest you do. Put negative infinity on the left side of your number line, positive infinity on the right side of your number line. But we are only going to write the things, only going to write the stuff okay, that's included in our solution. So here we go in interval notation. We're only going to write the numbers that are part of the solution. So the solution begins, there's no solutions here on the left-hand side. There's nothing with a circle on it, closed or open, and the arrow is not pointing that way. So the first thing that's on our solution is negative 1. So we're going to write negative 1 first, comma, and then the arrow goes over to positive infinity. So we're going to write negative 1 to positive infinity. Now, okay, remember, let's go back here real quick. Brackets are included. You use a bracket if that number is included. That's a closed circle, okay, for a bracket. And parentheses are always used for infinity. So on negative 1, it's going to get a bracket. On infinity, it's going to get a parenthesis. This is the correct answer. Okay, this is this inequality and this graph written in this new notation, interval notation. All right, let's try another one. Just takes a few to get a hang, get the hang of it. I promise you, you will. Let's try zero, and then x is less than negative three, so we're going to put negative three here, uh, less than, so it gets an open circle, not included, and then we're going to go x is less than negative three to the left. Okay, so now I'm going to put negative infinity on my number line, positive infinity on my number line, and I'm going to write this in interval notation, IN for short. All right, my arrow is pointing toward negative infinity. So on your number line, you always go smaller to bigger. So we got negative infinity first, and then the last solution that we're going to talk about is negative 3. That's the last thing that's marked on my number line. Nothing is marked to the right of negative 3. There's nothing over here marked. There's no arrow going that way, nothing. Okay, so we don't include anything else. Now, negative infinity. Infinity signs always get parentheses. Negative 3 is an open circle. If the circle is open, then it gets a parenthesis. That's what we did on the last slide. This is your answer in interval notation. And then we have negative 2 is less than or equal to x. Let's switch that around here. We would have x, if we read from right to left, x is greater than or equal to negative 2. x is greater than or equal to negative 2. We're going to put a 0. We're going to put a negative 2. Uh, it's allowed to be equal to, so the boundary gets a closed circle. We're going to go up. x is greater than that to the right. So we have negative infinity here, positive infinity there interval notation. Uh, our solution, no, it's not pointing toward negative infinity this time, so we're not going to use that. We're going to start on the negative 2, and then the arrow points towards positive infinity, so we're going to use positive infinity. Okay, negative 2 first, positive infinity second. We write them in order from left to right. See, we did it here as well. Left to right. Left to right. All right. Uh, negative 2, it's allowed to be equal to, it gets a bracket, okay, closed circle, and then infinity always gets a parenthesis. These are the correct answers in interval notation. All right, it takes some practice, okay, we will practice a lot, uh, we will get better at this, I promise, but it does take some practice to get used to it. Okay, next, you can also take a graph, right, and write it in inequality notation. So, 
these numbers, x, are numbers, well, we're comparing x with 4, right? 4 is the last number on this number line. There it is. It's got an open circle on it. So that means it's not allowed to be equal to. So, and the numbers are pointing to the left. So we want x to be less than 4. That's our solution in inequality notation. X is less than 4. Now, in interval notation, same way we did, put negative infinity, positive infinity. The arrow points towards negative infinity, and then 4 is the last number there. So we're going to have negative infinity. We're going to have 4. Negative infinity gets a parenthesis. 4 is an open circle. It also gets a parenthesis. That's your answer. In letter B, this is a closed circle. Okay, So we're going to compare x with negative 1. And from negative 1, we're going to the right. So x is greater than or equal to, it's a closed circle, negative 1. There's my inequality. And then we'll have negative infinity, positive infinity for our interval notation. Okay, The arrow is pointing toward positive infinity, so we're going to use that. And we're going to start on negative 1. So we're going from negative 1 to positive infinity. It's got a closed circle. It gets a bracket. Infinity gets a parenthesis. There's your answer. Okay? That's an interval notation. <clears throat> All right? And your inequality notation. So you have to be able to use anything that's given to go from one to the other and back again. All right. And then finally... Uh, we'll define a variable and then write an inequality, that should say, that describes the situation below. Trail rides start at 1999. So we'll be, we'll say T for the number of trail rides. They start at 1999. So if I say, you know, the price starts at 1999, that means it's 1999 and up, right? 1999 plus. Okay, so T is going to be greater than or equal to 1999. And that would be my inequality. Okay, and that's it. That's how we write things in inequality notation. That's how we graph things, uh, solutions to inequalities, and how we write them in interval notation. All of these we will continue practicing. Okay, and as always, thanks for clicking.